Okay, so yes, looks like an asteroid, meteor, meteorite, however you want to call it, hit and wiped out the dinosaurs. So where do these big ones come from? Yeah, so what's the link between the asteroid belt yeah. and the things that hit us? Um, so things in the asteroid belt, we've all seen they're in um, stable orbits. That's they're right. not in the Kirkwood gaps. So they don't get pulled out by Jupiter and they are, or they're in the, um, the Lagrange points. That's right. The Trojans. How do they get out of it? Yeah. Well, we think one thing is sometimes they'll collide. Two asteroids will collide. Okay. Now, if the asteroids were like the science fiction movies, they'd be colliding, they'd be colliding all, the time. all the time. But in practice, they're very much further apart. This is a rare event. But because they also have all different eccentricities. Yes. Circles they're not all orbiting in a nice lockstep. That's right. Some are going up and down. Some are going in and out. So weaving backwards and forwards on the freeway. That's, that's right. It'd be like instead dimensions. of everyone going the different lane, everyone going this way and that way and at different speeds. So when they collide, it can be nasty. And yep. you break these things up, as in this NASA illustration. Yep. And that will leave a cloud of fragments okay. in a fairly similar orbit. Okay. And this is actually what these little clumps we're talking about here are. So we think these clumps are fragments of ones that have collided? Yes. Um, so these different clumps, also the clumps we see here, yep. this is probably the debris field from two asteroids that collided maybe millions of years ago. Yep. And there's a whole clump of these things which are now spread out okay. into a cluster. They're now wrapped all the way around. You don't see them in the same place, but they still have similar orbits. They've diverged a little bit in their orbit. So it's kind of a cloud of debris that orbits in a similar way. Yes. In fact, they could have rotated around because of the pull of Jupiter, so they could be all over the place, but they still got the same eccentricity and inclination, Yep. because that doesn't change anything like as much as other parameters of the orbits. And so this is kind of what we think is happening with these things. You can s The asteroids that hit the Earth these are a very tiny fraction of the entire asteroids. Yeah, okay. So this is a, um, these are the ones that have been tracked, and you'll see that we know more and more of these things as time goes on. And so these are the ones that get near the Earth. Now, we're, these are small things. We're only seeing them when they're pretty close to the Earth. That's right. we can't see them when they're further away. Yep. Um, and they've got a whole... Basically, anything in these orbits is going to be short-lived. Okay. Because it's crossing the... Or weaving in and out past the orbits of Mer Mars, Earth... Venus, and that means they're not going to last forever. Okay. They're either going to have a close encounter and be pushed away or a close encounter and hit something eventually. Uh, so uh, the gravity of one of these is either going to just throw it out or pull it in. Yep. So these things are not going to last four billion years. Yep. They might last 10 million years, but sooner or later they're going to end up hitting something or being thrown out. Okay. Um, some of them will last a long time. They might not hit us, but um, that means these ones in the inner solar system have to be replenished all the time. Okay. And that's the basic idea, is that the, uh, what we're getting is that these things normally in their asteroid belt, in their nice safe orbits are fine, but every now and then one of two things happen. Either they collide and they produce some debris, and some of the debris is scattered into these gaps. Ah, yes. And then Jupiter will pull on them yep. and fling them into a quite different orbit. Yep. Steadily adding up every time it goes past an integer, and some of those orbits go out and end up falling into Jupiter, but some of them end up inside. So some of them may be actually Jupiter throwing them at us. Essentially, is what yes. you're telling me. That's right. It could also be the planets out here. If it's just gravity making them orbit, they'll stay in these orbits forever. Yep. But they've also got a small effect from radiation. Okay. For example, the radiation can heat up one side of the asteroid and cause some um, ions to recoil from it, which slowly, slowly moves the orbits. And we're talking about really tiny things, right? We're yep. not talking about something the size of a planet. Yep. But over many millions of years, that might be enough to push one of these things again into the gap, whereupon Jupiter, oh, bye-bye. And most of those could probably get flung out towards Jupiter, but some of them will get flung in, and then they will have their brief moment of glory um, before they end up dying somewhere. And so is this why, as, they get, as we get closer to the sun in this, we see that there's actually less of them here? Is that if they get closer to the sun, they get pulled more likely to the sun? Uh, probably this is more that the fact we haven't got telescopes close yes. to the sun to see them. So I suspect the red to black here, it looks like they're all concentrated around the Earth. It's just because they're easier to see there. Yep, okay. So this is purely a kind of bias in where we're looking. Yes.